From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Jason Stiff has our Thursday forecast. Plus, there's a potential record-setting giant pumpkin here in Montana. But first, our top story. Members of the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council are in Washington, D.C., sharing concerns to a looming government shutdown. The Blackfeet Tribe uses federal funding to operate government offices, fire, medical, and police. Congress must pass a federal budget or a continuing resolution to keep the government afloat. October 1st starts the new fiscal year. Tribes in Montana will operate on a continuing resolution if Congress cannot reach an agreement. That order is a small percentage of the previous year's budget for essential employees for 30 days. The tribe says the implications of the shutdown are unacceptable due to its treaty obligations for essential services. Well, it's not going to just affect tribes. It's all lower income people that are going to be affected by this by this shutdown. And you got you have veteran benefits that won't get paid, social security that won't get paid or I I'm I'm supposing, but um, yeah, this is this is a big major deal. The Crow tribe is also in DC advocating an important Native American cultural ceremony criminalized by the U.S. government in the late 1800s is being recognized in Helena this week. MTN's Tom Buchanan has the story. This Wednesday afternoon, elder of the Little Shell tribe, Daniel Pocha, helped commemorate a plaque at the Lazy Green. The plaque commemorates a 1908 Sundance that took place in the spot. The late Nicholas Vrooman, who was a big part of this event too, in the years it's taken to get it off the ground, told me once that there's enough history in the Northern Plains for a dozen historians to devote their lives to and never overlap. So this is an important piece of recognizing that and commemorating it and, and kind of bringing us out of the shadows of, of these events that we were participants in as well. The plaque commemorates a Sundance done in the same spot in 1908. The dance was performed by Chief Little Bear of Rocky Boys Band. In the late 1800s, Native American sun dances and other indigenous ceremonies were criminalized by the government. Following the dance, Native Americans went to meet with Congressman Carter asking for a reservation for the landless Indians of Montana. Daniel Pocha, an elder of the Little Shell Tribe, says that the Little Shell Tribe, which only became recognized by the federal government in 2019, still does not have a reservation. Pocha expounded on the importance of passing along the history to the children of Montana in order to keep these stories alive. Because our biggest hope is that we can ignite a spark in them that want them to take possession of this and the story and to move forward with it. Because we don't want this monument just to be in the ground and forgotten. We want it to be a story that lives on in the school. Chris Latre, a member of the Little Shell Tribe, says that this history is a lot closer to us than we might think. Well, when we think about some of the things that happened in the early 1900s or late 1800s, we think of that as ancient history, and it's not. We're talking, in my case, three generations from the last people who hunted wild buffalo on the plains, and that's not that long ago. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. A Polson man is behind bars this noon, charged with stabbing his mother who had dementia to death, then hiding her body in her home. The heinous crime happened back in August. Prosecutors say Garrett Vasca stabbed his mother, Felice de St. John, multiple times with a knife, then concealed her body by wrapping her in garbage bags and blankets and hiding her in a bedroom. His arraignment is scheduled for September 28th. An arrest has been made in Sunday's Crosstown arson case in Billings that torched two vans at Senior High School and another vehicle downtown. 33-year-old Calder Strandman is behind bars, arrested yesterday and facing felony criminal mischief, theft and arson charges. Police believe the fire started after a botched attempt to siphon gas. Federal prosecutors are seeking a more than 11-year prison sentence for a Dillon man convicted of assaulting police at the January 6, 2021 riot at the U.S. Capitol. 
Isaac Steve Surgeon was seen on an officer's body camera outside the Capitol and was part of a group that picked up a metal barricade and shoved it into a group of D.C. Metropolitan officers. He was found guilty in a bench trial on a half dozen charges, including assaulting an officer and committing an act of physical violence on Capitol grounds. Federal prosecutors are recommending an 11-year, three-month jail sentence and a $2,000 fine. Sentencing is set for next Tuesday. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Well, we're a little bit just over 36 hours from the end of summer and the beginning of fall around the country. You can see in the southern tier of states, it still feels well into summer. We're expecting highs in the 90s from Phoenix all the way through Dallas, as well as Corpus Christi and New Orleans, and close to 90 degrees for Miami. But you'll notice we have stormy weather in the forecast, too, for the Midwest, from the Dakotas southward all the way toward Texas. Lots of potentially severe weather with showers and thunderstorms and much cooler weather for our part of the world. We already have an area of low pressure moving our direction. Cooler weather for everyone this second to last full day of summer for everybody. I'll let you know how much rain, snow and when we can expect coming up in a few minutes. to go far to find the great big pumpkin as it's right here in Lockwood. The man who grew this gorgeous gourd believes it might be the largest ever grown in the state of Montana. Get on my back. Whether it's playing with his pup Jiffy. There you go. Okay, jump off. Or going out for a hunt. Right now it's birds, but I'll be elk hunting soon. 30-year-old Joe Nigro has a lot of passions in life. I think positivity will feed this pumpkin. But none are as unique as his love for growing giant gourds. I've just been intrigued with it my whole life, so how could you not be? It's been three years since the insurance salesman brought his pumpkin passion to life. My first one was 900 pounds and it cracked, so he brought it to the dump and weighed it. Last year it was 554 and it got fifth place in Wyoming in a Wyoming way off, so and this is year three. Instead of smashing pumpkins, he's trying to smash a record. July 5th is when this flower was pollinated and it was just this big. So this is like a 70, 77 day old pumpkin. This year three pumpkin is estimated to be over 1300 pounds. It's over the state record. It just needs to stay true to measurements is all. And we got to make sure no one else grows a bigger pumpkin this year. Since 1258 pounds is the current pumpkin record for Montana. And then you just bring it down. He's got a pretty gourd shot with his Atlantic giant pumpkin. It came from a pumpkin that was 2058 pounds uh, grown in Connecticut. So it's definitely, it knows how to be big. It's just got to get there. The giant gourd stands on top of 750 square feet of root system. And it'll be a feat to take to Rapid City, South Dakota for the great downtown pumpkin festival. You kind of form a basket with straps and ropes. And then the guys at Case Construction, they're going to bring a tractor over. And then you're going to hopefully just pick it up and plop it in a truck or, or a trailer. And after Nigro hopefully brings back the state record, the gourd will be put to good use. It's going to go to the Laurel Pumpkin Patch. I talked to those guys and they thought it would be cool for everybody to kind of see it and gawk at it. In Lockwood, Alina Howder, MTN News. Up next, Jason's in with another check of the day's weather. Plus, we check in with a Montana author who's a female combat veteran. Her story after the break. The MTN Noon News continues right after this.